Yes, I am um, live. Camilla, I'm live just now. Um, I've actually got some props for today's uh, session. And so I'm, try I'm trying to... Uh... Oh, Camilla, you've got problems trying to find the transmission live. I've just got a message there. It's on the Stiano Plastic Surgery page, but, uh, oh no, the Stiano Clinic it's called, the Stiano Clinic page. But I guess that's not helpful because you'll only see this if you found it, so it's not really helpful me telling you here where to find the oh, live feed. So in a, once I've finished, um, I will message you back wherever that message came in because I just saw it come up the top of my phone. Right, hello and uh, welcome um, to... Um, uh, session here, question and answer session. I'm Jonathan Stiano, consultant plastic surgeon, and I am very happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. I've got a couple of questions here um, that I'm uh, going to go through, but if anyone has any questions that they want to chip in with, then by all means do, although I have struggled in the past to look at them on the, on the screen, but um, I'm happy to give it a go. Um, what we've got here, we've got a question from someone. I'm not going to use your name. I'm going to keep it anonymous because patient count confidentiality because you are actually a patient of mine and you are having surgery soon and you'll want to know what to pack in your bag. Um, that is a really great question. Uh, to the extent that I'm actually thinking of doing a blog post along those lines, what to pack in your bag if you, when you come in for surgery, stroke, what can you expect on your consultation? That's another blog post I was thinking of doing. Um, if you have any suggestions for blog posts, let me know. Put it in the comments here or what can you do on Facebook? Message me or put a post post me on face, Facebook um, because I'm always looking for ideas for blog posts. So if you, you're the best people because I'm doing it for you, I suppose. So if you think of anything, then let me know because um, it's important for me to know what's relevant to you. Um, so what's packing back? Um, a lot of surgery can be done as a day case, although often um, there's an overnight stay included. For instance, breast augmentation. I know you're not having a breast augmentation, but breast augmentation, you're going to be staying for a couple of nights. But um, um, gynecomastia correction, um, a lot of surgeries is, is, can be done as a day case, but there's usually an overnight stay included with the hospital. So I always tell people plan for an overnight stay because even though you may be well enough to go home that night, um, it's usually best to plan for an overnight stay because there's no harm in that if you go home that night. But if you don't go home that night, it's a bit of a nuisance if you haven't planned for the overnight stay. Where do I get my hats from? Oh, they don't seem to be there. Um, so, number one, plan for an overnight stay. Number two, what do I bring? A um, couple of things logistically you've got to think of. You've got to think of the things about the car. Uh, this may all be basic and obvious common sense, but if you drive to the hospital to your have your surgery, you um, probably won't be able to drive home. So think about that. Oh, there's a car park in the hospital and you don't have to pay or anything like that, but it's just that you might think, oh, crikey, my car's here now. So um, uh, that's something you might want to think about, Exhibit A. Exhibit B, um, plan for an overnight stay. Bring um, comfortable clothing, um, don't don't think of um, fashion, um, you know, tight jeans and things like that. And just just bring comfortable clothing that you're um, that's easy to get on and off. Um, you don't really want um, clothes that are difficult to to put on and off, particularly if you're having surgery to your upper body. I know you're having um, different sort of body contouring surgery, but uh, sort of loose fitting, comfortable clothing. Um, don't go crazy with the makeup. Um, Try not to wear too much makeup. You know, you don't really need any makeup at all. Um, and the anaesthetist will be looking for signs in your in your face and in your skin to, to, to get an idea of your blood perfusion. And so it's they they um, will welcome it if you weren't um, too heavily um, uh, too heavily makeup makeup. Oh, you know what I mean. Um, um, we've had a thing today about hair extensions. <laughs> Quite a hoo-ha with the old hair extensions today. Um, the problem being that they've got little metal clips that they're clipped in on. As a rule, um, awesome. You you made it, Camilla. Nice to see you. Glad you find it. 
um, I'm going to, um, I will answer your question in a, in a minute, um, Camilla, um, but I'm on a roll here. Um, so um, there's little metal clips in hair extensions and so sometimes there's a bit of a worry with any sort of metal work because of the machine that I use in theatre, it's called a, uh, a monopolar um, diathermy machine and it has an electrical current which passes from the tip of the, um, it's like a sort of scalpel but it's got an electrical current that passes from the tip to a metal plate we put on your leg and so we don't really want any metal work anywhere nearby because if it goes to the metal work and it's a smaller point of contact you could get a burn, that's why we that's the reason we make a big thing about metal work in surgery. Like if you've got piercings and things, we ask you to take them out. Now, if the metal works far away from the place of surgery, certainly if it's further away than the metal plate on your thigh will be, if that makes sense, the um, if the from the point of the, the the scalpel thing I'm using, if the quickest place to go to is the metal plate on the thigh, then it'll go there. I don't know if I'm making this very clear, but basically, yeah, hair extensions are a bit of a thing, but they're okay. Um, I'm from South Africa, right? <laughs> international. I'm going to put that on my bio now. International, uh, internationally famous reputation. Um, um, ah, yeah, hair extensions. So we've had a bit of a do. The bottom line was the hair extensions were fine. So um, I have actually done surgery on someone, she might be here, who has had uh, dermal anchors, which is sort of like uh, metal studs in her chest, and she was having a breast augmentation, and that was actually fine. So... Um, Sometimes you find that people do make a big deal about stuff, but when you actually get down to it, it's not that much of a problem. So if you can remove your hair extensions, if particularly if they've got metal on them, then that's good. But if you can't, it's not a disaster, but certainly speak to me first if I'm the surgeon or if you've got another surgeon, then speak to your surgeon first. Don't take my word for it because some people might be more um, strict on that. And also it depends on where you're having surgery, as in what part of the body you're having surgery. The other thing is nails. Um, ideally, again, we like to see your nails because again, for the blood blood flow, uh, the capillary refill. But I understand a lot of people have shellac nails or some kind of glued on nails that are quite a big thing to move to take off. Because I sometimes say, oh, you can just take one off. But I understand that would be great taking one off. So personally, in my practice, um, again, it re relies not probably more on the anaesthetist than the surgeon. But then the anaesthetist that I work with, we're happy for the nails. Um, because we can go with your toenails, we can go with your ears, look at other places for your capillary refill. So we're okay with the nails. But if it is easy to take them off, it is nice to have not have false nails on. But it's not a big, massive deal breaker for me. So no false nails. Hair extensions if you can avoid it, but it's not a big problem. Loose clothing, not too much makeup. Overnight bag, so toothbrush, um, toothpaste, you know, um, uh, slippers. Pyjamas if you want, you'll get a gown, but you might want to change into pyjamas to feel more comfortable, but you'll be wearing a gown, and especially if it's just one night in hospital, maybe the gown will be fine, but if it's more than one night, you might want to bring your own pyjamas, uh, a dressing gown, things like that. And uh, uh, that's what you need to pack. Uh, oh, magazine, um, you know, something to read. Not that I try, not that I keep people waiting for surgery, Try and keep your waiting down to a minimum, but uh, you might want to bring a magazine, a book. Uh, there is obviously TVs and what have you in the in the hospital. Each one, yeah, you've got a private room. They're all private rooms in all the hospitals I work at. But um, yeah, those are things that you might want to do on your overnight bag. Uh, I'm going to go straight to Camilla now, and we got uh, when can you sleep on your belly? Um, you know what? A lot of this stuff is uh, dependent on you and when you feel comfortable. A month post-op, you're getting there. Um, so I think you might be able to see see how you get a month. Things really, you know, six weeks, I think things, not that mass, massive happens between four to six weeks. But, you know, first of all, um, is sleeping with a bra is good. Uh, and you, you might be able to sleep on your belly now. When I say to people, you can't do this or you can't do that, what often happens is they wake up and they're on their belly. You know, you can't sort of stop what you do at night because you might roll over. You're not going to do anything disastrous if you sleep on your belly. The only thing is it'll be uncomfortable. It might make things swell a bit more. And to be honest with you, your body will tell you. So if you try and sleep on your belly and it's uncomfortable, then don't do it. But your body will. You're scared. Don't be scared. 
try, just gently lie on, lie on your front and see what happens. You're going to be fine. I promise, nothing bad's going to happen. If it does, I'll fix it. <laughs> Not that anything will, but it won't. Nothing bad will happen. But just gently lie on your front. I'm assuming you want, you know, you normally sleep on your on your front and you're comfortable sleeping on your front. So um, give, give it a go. A month, you sort of get, you, I mean, if you'd asked me, an, if you'd asked me at the beginning, I'd say probably around six weeks, but see how you go. And if it's not too uncomfortable and you're, if you're okay lying on your side, you might be okay on your belly. And if you're not okay on your belly, you'll just roll, you know, you'll, you'll roll over. You, your body, you, you know, you're not a prisoner. You're not tied down. Your body will just roll over <laughs> it's, give it a go you know and if it's uncomfortable you'll roll back on your back on your side and if it's not uncomfortable then it's not doing any harm it's okay go for it give it a try might be okay might not in which case don't do it hope that's helpful um let me know let me know how you get on give us a ring um and swimming pool now swimming pool you can swim now so basically, with uh, most of the surgery that I do, the post-op regime is I have a dressing on and I see people at a week, take the dressing off and then don't need a dressing anymore. And I think that's, uh, well, I know that's the, the case with you. So it's the, it's the case with most of the surgery that I do. After that week, uh, there's sometimes little spots of blood. So I'll give you a little bit of gauze just to wear in your, in your bra or in your garment, whatever the surgery is. Um, and then when, that, when the gauze that you got over your wound hasn't got any little spots of blood anymore and you don't need any more gauze that's when you can go swimming if that makes sense so it's usually a few days after the first week so i.e after a couple of weeks uh, once the, the wound is dry um, then you can go swimming and from a wound point of view actually hold on a minute what, what swimming pool so from a wound point of view that is so you can actually sort of get in a swimming pool from a wound point of view if it's the sea you can get in pretty much straight away but you know what you, swimming pool you don't want to have little spots of blood mix just like if you had an open cut you wouldn't want to go into a swimming pool um from a swimming point of view you've got to be a bit more careful so if you're just sitting in the swimming pool and relaxing then uh, then you're fine but if you are um going to be actually full-on swimming then I'd probably again it's another it's a six-week job for full-on proper swimming because it's going to uncomfortable as well if you swim um you know pro proper swimming if you just want to do a bit of gently that you might be able to do that after about two or three weeks just gently but it's a bit like the lying on your front um just just listen to your body yes is just relax absolutely I'm with you on that one um yeah absolutely just, to, just listen to your body see how you get on and uh, try and lie on your front and you can definitely go to the swimming pool but maybe not do, do too many crazy lengths and things just take it easy and the, the advice is if you do do something if you do do a length and it's uncomfortable then don't do it you know stop doing it or don't do it again uh, but if it's not uncomfortable if you do something that's not uncomfortable then you're okay after four to six weeks which is where you are now you can start getting back into stuff normal stuff gym if you want to start doing your upper body stuff in your gym just see how it goes if it's not uncomfortable carry on so you, you that's that's the stage you're at now you can start getting back into things um you're not going to do any harm you're just going to make it swell so just back off if it is uncomfortable so don't just push on and say i said you could do it listen to your body jamie jamie jamie's been in touch i don't know if you're out there jamie um i'm really sorry to hear what's happened because you've had a problem with your implant you had implants uh um, and you had a problem with your implant, uh, which was a knuck what looks like a knuckle underneath the, the skin, a bump underneath your skin. And then you went to New York, I think it was, NYC, um, to have revision surgery. And you still got the, the knuckle. You're welcome, Camilla. You still got the, the knuckle. So this is, a, this, is, um, this is someone who's been in touch through, the, uh, through Facebook. So thanks for getting in touch, Jamie. Uh, and you live in Birmingham. And you went to New York for your surgery. Anyway um this is a uh, difficult problem um jamie and looking at your photos it's always difficult with photos this is my prop so this is why i needed the thing on the stand because of my prop it's a breast implant um that's one i used earlier uh, <laughs> it's a sample sample implant um so the 
Oh, blimey, what was I saying? So the problem with it, looking, oh yeah, that's right, looking at your photos, it's always difficult. I get a lot of people asking for opinions with photos and what have you, and, I, and I'm very happy to give you an opinion and give, give you advice. But the advice is always, number one, go back to your original surgeon. Now I know they're in New York, so I know that's tough, uh, but, and I think you have been in touch with them. But number two is there's no um, substitute for an in-person consultation. So really, an you're welcome to come and see me or you know, another doctor, but I think seeing a surgeon in person is no substitute for um, uh, and sort of internet consultation, if you like, but I'm very happy to give you my opinion on the subject matter and what it looks like you've got on your implant uh, or, or, or that the, the you've got is it looks like a sort of, see, I've got a load of writing on my page. I don't know if you can see, like a knuckle, like a bump, a bump underneath your skin, uh, a bulge of the implant. Now, um, there's a couple reasons you might have that. Um, w w you obviously had it but before you had your revision. You've then had your revision and you still got it. Now, if you came to see me before your revision and you had it, I'd say, well, maybe it's that you're, and this is probably what the surgeon in New York was thinking, maybe that the pocket that your implant is in, the, um, the space that your implant is in, is a little bit too small or was made a little bit too small, a little bit tight, um, and the implant is sort of bent on itself, causing a little knuckle that you can feel as a as a bump. Uh, so that sometimes happens. Um, number one problem. Number two problem could be the amount of cover you've got over the top of the implant, or it could be a combination of the two. So um, if you're very slim, if you haven't got much breast tissue and much uh, fatty and subcutaneous tissue over your chest, you might you'll be more likely to have problems like this, feeling knuckles, feeling, uh, uh, seeing ripples, seeing, you know, feeling the edge of the implant, feeling that, the, you know, getting the perception that there's an implant there. You're more likely to see or feel the implant if you've got less covering over the chest. So it might be a, bit a combination of the two. And the fact that you've got exactly the same problem in exactly the same place by the looks of it, I think, I think you said it's the same problem in the same place, suggests that there's an element of your tissue cover over the top that's that's the problem here. You might have a absence of uh, a, a thinness of your breast tissue over that area, which means it's more difficult for your body to hide the implant. At the end of the day, when you have implants, they always sit in your body. They always look well. If you hold an implant up, there's always some ripples and things like that on it, and the, whether or not you can see that depends on how much covering you've got over your chest, uh, over the implant, which means how much breast tissue and how much soft tissue you've got. The more you've got, the more soft tissue you've got, the more you can get away with um, having a knuckle or a, or a bend in the implant um, and not being able to feel it. If you're very slim and you haven't got much subcutaneous covering, you're more likely to feel these knuckles and these edges. Um, I'm not saying put on weight, but if you were to put on weight, that might help. <laughs> I suppose I am saying put on weight there, aren't I? But I'm, I, I can't really see from the photos how, if you're, what your sort of body habitus is like. But um, certainly if you are very slim and you haven't got much covering over your chest, putting on a little bit of weight would help. The equivalent of putting on weight, well, not the equivalent of putting on weight, or, but the sort of surgical option for that is to do fat grafting over the top of it, where we inject fat over the top. And I've done that before um, in patients who have a bit of a knuckle in their implant. It's more common in patients who have had uh, breast cancer, who are doing breast reconstruction on, because obviously they've had a mastectomy, so they've got no cover whatsoever. So it's more common to get knuckles and what have you of the implant when you've got like, you haven't even got a breast to cover it with. Um, so fat grafting is one option to cover this knuckle. I can't remember how much post-op you are. Sorry, I think you're about four months post-op, are you? I think which is not bad, four months, is, you have given it a good length of time. But one thing you were saying is, should I leave it to settle? Always, the, the advice is always leave it to settle as long as you can. But one thing I would be um, cautioning you on is to check with your surgeon in New York as to what the revision policy is, because sometimes they have a revision policy to say that they only will cover you for revision surgery for six months or 12 months or two years or five years or one year or I've said one year already. Anyway, a certain period of time. Um, and so you don't want to wait seven months and then go back and say, I can't stand it anymore. And they say, oh, you have to pay now because it was you know, past the six months. So, but the, but that notwithstanding that, the longer you leave it, the better. Uh, so it might settle. If it doesn't settle, um, then options would be to, I think you've gone to a bigger implant as well, which is a more, you know, 
it's a it's a simple maths or well, physics or science i don't know what what science just say science um you know the the the, the more you've got implant and you've got breast tissue the more it's in favor of the breast tissue so the more breast tissue you've got compared to implant the better cover you're going to get over the top of it and the better um the less likely you are to feel it so what now you've gone to a bigger implant you have changed the balance to like you know you've got the same amount of breast tissue trying to cover a bigger implant so you're less likely to be able to get cover over that knuckle um well if it is a knuckle or it might be a defect in your soft tissues but um so a bigger implant might be good for you because you might have wanted to have a bigger implant and bigger size, in which case I hope that's a good thing that you've got a bigger size, but it's a bad thing because it's more likely, uh, more difficult to cover it. So um, so your options moving forward, I would suggest, are you could consider fat grafting over the knuckle. Um, it is tough. It's not easy to fat graft over a knuckle of an implant. By definition, the problem is, as I've just said, you haven't got much cover. And you've got to get that fat transfer, that fat graft into healthy tissue. And you haven't got much healthy tissue over the knuckle. So it's a difficult problem. To, it's difficult to get a nice result with it. But it's an option to try and get more padding. Um, probably option one before that option. Uh, that could be what option 1A. Option one is to put on weight. I hate to say it, but it you know that's only if your body mass index isn't quite right. Um, but if you're if you're um, if you're happy with your weight, don't please don't make me put you make you put on weight. But that would help. But uh, that, that's option one. Option one A fat grafting, which is artificially putting weight over the front of it. But it is difficult. Results are subtle. It's expensive, and it might not work. You know, it might it might not cover the knuckle. The other thing is you can get complications with fat fat grafting, not least infection. And if you get infection, then you can have to remove the implant, and that can be a big deal. So I wouldn't take it on lightly. Um, other options, uh, you know, it'd be nice to know if the if the when the implant came out, if it had a knuckle in it, if there was a problem with the knuckle, if that was a a, a problem, because it's potential that your, your next implant's got a knuckle in it. So you could say, look, make a bigger pocket. Um, so that the implant sits down better. There are two different types of implant. You may or may not know about polyurethane foam and silicone implants. And the way we do the surgery is slightly different between the two. With a silicone implant, you make the pocket to fit hand in glove for the implant. You have to be very careful with the way that you make the pocket. You don't want to make the pocket too big when you use a silicone implant because silicone implants move about silicone implant you make the pocket too big um the silicone implant can move over to the next breast and too far to the side it can it it's so you've got to be careful with the size of the pocket that you make therefore you're more likely to get this problem where if you make it too small you get the knuckle polyurethane foam implants are different polyurethane foam implants you make the pocket big you make a really big pocket bigger pocket than you need loads of space because polyurethane foam implants have got quite a hard ridge around the edge the edge of them are quite firm and so you really don't want them being scrunched up and the other thing about polyurethane foam implants they don't move they don't move sideways this way that way they stay where you put them so you can make a big pocket. In fact, you deliberately make a big pocket with a polyurethane foam implant, and you want it. You you take a lot of care to make sure it it sits nicely, and you don't get these these um, ridges and rucks. Um, so, I'm not sure if that's an argument to use a polyurethane foam implant, but it would mean that you can make a really big pocket and make sure you don't get another knuckle. I couldn't guarantee you wouldn't get another knuckle, but that's something to consider. The other thing to think about when you've got problems with implants like knuckles and what have you is what type of implant you've got, how cohesive. I don't want to, I don't, don't think you need to get too into the science of it, but there are different cohesivities. Um, I'm sure that is a word. Uh, cohesive is definitely a word. So um, cohesivities of implant. Uh, what that means is how runny the silicone is. They, they, uh, there's often usually three different levels of cohesivity um, of implant. Um, normally don't get into that with people because it's it's not really relevant. The, the Broadly speaking, modern day implants are more cohesive than old implants. That doesn't mean they feel a bit firmer than the old ones, but they're safer if they rupture. Um, so it might be worth looking at how cohesive your implant is, because if your implant is very runny or not very cohesive, is very runny, which is a runny one, which is more like the old ones, it's more likely to bend and buckle. 
Whereas if it's more cohesive, form stable, you might have heard that term, the Americans like that term. Um, form, if it's a more form stable implant, it's less likely to ridge and knuckle uh, and more likely to sort of keep its shape, but it will feel firmer. So there's always a balance. I think whatever you do is a balance. I think it's a difficult case. I wish you all the best of luck with it. Um, and I've got to say, there's no really good options. Probably the best option is put on weight, which is not a great one, I, I know. Um, but, um, and I'm really sorry to hear about the thing going all the way to New York for your surgery. That's a, that's a, that's a shocker to go all the way there and get a problem. But it might settle. And the, the bottom line is stick with your surgeon, stick with the emails and all that with your surgeon. You're welcome to email me as well or, t or Facebook me or whatever. And I'll give you any advice I can by that means. But um, good luck with that. Ooh, so I've got no hats. Uh, Facebook's still not giving me a hat today, unfortunately. So I'm sorry if um, I'm sure a lot of you. Um, oh God, what have I done now? A lot of you are there purely for the hat. Um, but uh, but it's normally down at the bottom, or is it at the top? No, it's at the top. Is it? No. Anyway, um, I um, so I hope that's been helpful to um, all involved in sundry. If you do have any questions, as always, post them in. But something I've just thought about tonight. Have you checked this guarantee? Um, is if you've got any ideas for blog posts? Actually, I've got quite a lot of guarantees of implants. I could do a blog post about that, couldn't I? Um, Camilla, what do you mean? Have you checked this guarantee? Have I checked your guarantee? Do you mean your guarantee of your implants or fomento? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh God, you asked me that ages ago, didn't you? Oh dear. Sorry. I was, I did speak to Laura about that. Um, oh, this is embarrassing. Um, well, if we haven't got back to you, then I'm sorry about that. But the uh, the bottom line is, if there is a problem with your implant, yeah, I know, I know, I know about having registered. I spoke to Laura about that. Um, I'll speak to her again tomorrow. What I said to Laura is that if there's a problem, oh, sorry. No, that's not me trying to get out of the question. Sorry, <laughs> over. Uh, if there's a problem, I've got a record that you've got a mentor implant, so I will be able to verify that you've got a mentor implant. I, I think I did ask Laura to look at what the online thing was, because the online thing, they often there's no harm in registering online, so do register online, but it's often that they want your details to sort of contact you with stuff, which may, may or may not be a good thing. Um, the bottom line is, I haven't, Camilla, I'm sorry, but I did ask Laura, to my, in my defence, I did ask Laura to do it. Um, to look into what the online thing is. So um, we'll contact you. You obviously like Facebook. We'll maybe Facebook you tomorrow. Um, yeah, I know you haven't got any problems. Yeah, I know you want to know whether you're supposed to fill in some form on Mentor. The problem is I don't use Mentor regularly, so I'm not um, big on what you what forms you're supposed to fill in. But um, yeah, rest assured, if you have any problems, I'll stand by you and I will confirm that you have got a Mentor implant. If you want to do it online, go for it. Laura will look at what the online thing is to just to check that you don't have to do it online because, of course, it might be an op that might you might have to do it online. In which case, we better tell you that you have to do it online, and uh, it's useful to, for me to know as well. And uh, sorry about that. And um, it's always good if you want something done, go on the Facebook Live and ask me because then that uh, yeah, that makes sure it gets done. <laughs> if I don't do it, come on next week, Camilla, and publicly. Um, uh, out me for a man who doesn't do stuff but I will do it so you won't have to do that because I will do it I'll do it tomorrow and if Laura doesn't do it I'm going to do it myself all right so um, that's saying something isn't it um, so yeah right so that's uh, before anyone else wants to uh, pick me up on anything that I've said that I will do and I haven't um, I'm going to get out of here the taxi's running and I am um, going to head for the hills um, but yeah, please do get in touch if anyone's got any questions or ideas for blog posts or suggestions or you're very welcome, uh, Camilla, or, um, things, things that I said I do that I haven't done. Just let me know and I'll be sure to do them promptly. So have a nice evening and, uh, seven o'clock next Tuesday, I will see you there. I'm checking out.